No intro is kind of hard. I'm used to I'm used to a heavy, <laughs> dramatic intro. <laughs> What's up, y'all? We're back from ADCC West Coast Trials, and um, you know, pretty successful, pretty successful tournament for the B team guys. We had three guys in the finals, and well, as the B team brand goes, three silver medalists. I guess we'll kick it off uh, talking about J Rod and his. Uh, you know, really uber successful run uh, all the way through to the finals. And, um, you know, J-Rod had a, a bunch of tough matches. He also had some adversity, you know, going into the to the tournament. I don't know if you probably don't want to talk about that. We'll talk about that later. Talk, I tell you. You told, me I should, you told me I should be happy. You shouldn't be happy. Well. Yeah, I told you I was happy. And you were like, what the f***? Uh, okay, yeah. All right, so after Jay lost in the finals, I was like, I was like, uh, how you feeling? And that was a rhetorical question because I thought I knew the answer. And he was like, oh, I'm fine, I'm happy. And I was disgusted. <laughs> I almost puked in my shirt. I was, I was happy because, um, I was happy because I was able to compete. I was uh, injured. I got like pretty injured like two weeks, actually exactly two weeks before the tournament. Uh, it was a pretty bad injury. I couldn't walk for a couple of days. Um, but we fucking came back and made it all the way through, got a few subs, made it all the way to the finals, ended up losing to Tackett. Um, it was a good tournament, you know? At two, two weeks before, I was literally like, I might not be able to compete. And then two weeks later, I'm like, in the finals. I'm fucking happy. <clears throat> well, you healed up pretty fast. Yeah. I mean, you're definitely not uh, 100%, you're still a little banged sure. up. For sure. But um, yeah, you had a great showing. It didn't hold you back too much. Yeah. Actually, it helped me back a lot. I could only pass to one side. Could all, okay, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely held you back, being a little banged up. Yeah. Could only pass one side. Um, we talked a little bit, a little bit about this uh, after the tournament. How <clears throat> I would like for your passing to be a bit mm -hmm. more uh, technical and less and less athletic. And I got yeah. that from. Well, I mean, I got it from fucking training and whatnot. But um, jo jo I was talking to JoJo, like Joseph Chen, mm -hmm. about 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 how he develops like technique. And, he's, and Joseph said he really had to work hard on eliminating the athleticism from his passing so that he could really use technique. Cause the, the athletic part, it, it, it comes, it's natural. Right? For sure. Yeah, it's also like, I feel like I do that in training. Like I, I'm not really like scrapping too crazy and like using as much athleticism and training unless it's for a competition. For competition, yeah. yeah. I try at least. Um, you try, yeah. But the instincts kick kick, uh, kick on sometimes. You just wanna, yeah. just wanna kill, yeah. It's it's honestly it's pretty difficult. It's difficult for. It was difficult for me for a long time to to. I really had to focus on being technical and not using the athleticism, like, because so you get into some positions. Maybe you're like, you're like you're. Say I'm body lock passing. I'm I'm like ninety percent where I need to be. And instead of doing the other 10%, I'll just use the athleticism. And for sure, most guys, it works. Um, but, you know, I try to only do things that work on the absolute best guys in the world. So if it doesn't work on, like, in, on, on, on the best guys, I'm like, I'm like, all right, be more technical. I like taking risks. That's that's a big that's a little bit of a difference uh, between our uh, our styles. You're a, a more of a risk taker, which helps you in some situations because you are you're somewhat careless. Like you don't care if you end up on bottom. You're like fuck out. I'll get out. Get the sub anyway. As usually. to me, <laughs> yeah, usually. <laughs> As for me, I like to be absolutely dominant uh, throughout the whole the whole thing. Like I don't want to get scored on. I don't want to be in a any bad positions. Granted, if I get in the bad position, like I'm totally comfortable because I train those bad positions. Uh, but yeah, you're you're definitely a risk risk taker. That's uh, yeah. That's I would say that's probably the main difference between ourselves. Obviously, we do so, uh, we do a bunch I, of things I like sort of slightly different, but yeah. more of a risk taker. Uh, we should go over some my some of my highlights and the highlights of like I guess specifically the guys that got into the finals as well. Um, I got a few subs. First day, I got. Uh, quick mother's milk, first match. Second match, I got a smother uh, from the back. 
and then going before, in, before the before their first match, or I guess maybe a couple of days before the trials, you were hitting mother oh. smoking here. I was like, bro, this is not gonna work like in competition. Yeah. And the umami smoked a, a guy in like ten seconds, and he looked at me and was like, I told you it worked. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, you got me. I it's it's actually frustrating. I I got the submission so quickly, Flo just didn't catch the footage. Yeah, it's it's, it's nowhere to be found. You can't find it. But yeah. Nikki Rao was talking shit, saying my submissions don't work. My mother's milk wouldn't work. So I had to prove him wrong and do it the very first uh, match. Um, got that. Got the other smother. On to day two, I got like a, a rear naked choke. What other subs did I get? I got rear naked choke, and that was it. Rear naked choke and then points. I won two, uh, two matches by points. Uh, my second match by, that I won by points was against like a big, like thick... Brazilian guy, I think he was Brazilian. He was so dense, and I just kept, I just did not, that was all heart. Yeah. I just did not stop moving. Um, that was a battle. That was exhausting. I was covered in blood uh, by the end of that. And then what else happened? Yeah, it was, oh, um, I fought Chris Wojcik, my teammate. Um, that, that match pretty much went exactly how our, rounds go in the gym um it's usually a back and forth you know uh but in competition you have to be like a little bit more less uh like i i tend to give shit away in like when we're here training yeah uh but you can't do that in competition so it's kind of like almost hard to flip the switch i felt a lot less pressure fighting fighting chris i had like like a intense feeling of like i don't know just gratitude but before like walking onto that that uh before that match just because you were able to compete because i was able to, to compete and no pressure fighting a teammate just because it's it's my teammate if i lose I'll, if i lose i'm either gonna i would prefer to lose to the best guy or a teammate because i can always come back to training and fucking ask questions and shit obviously i don't want to lose but if it's gonna happen those are the people yeah, Chris is good. He's legit. He beat Ryan Akins. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. great win for, awesome. for Chris. He's uh, obviously he's technical, great guard player, um, but uh, he has a lot of heart. Chris is is heart. very intelligent grappler, yeah. and he has a lot of heart. Like we saw, um, we saw in the finals where he knew, he knew he needed to stay offensive to either score or get the get the decision, and he takes like three, four, five shots or something like that in the yeah. overtime to all finals. Yeah, I mean, well, in the in the overtime. He takes like oh. uh, against against Aiken. It takes yeah. like you know he's offensive the entire the entire match, and then specifically in overtime, uber offensive when it comes to wrestling, which is not his best attribute. He's so gotten he, a lot better at wrestling the past year. That was very very good. Good yep. to see. Uh, Impressive to see. And Aiken's a big big strong guy. Big fucking guy. He's like the biggest guy in the in the weight class. Something yeah. Like it. Yeah. Uh, what else? Yeah. And then I lost in the final attack. Let's not talk about that. Yep. Um, on to Vince and our uh, other finalist, Bradley. Adam Bradley. Uh, who should we talk about first? Let's start with, uh, let's start with Bradley. Um, leading up to the finals, uh, Bradley had a, a great, great matches, um, good showing, a uh, very memorable match against, um, he ended up beating 10th Planet, what's the guy? Kyle? Kyle Bohm. Yep, Mr. Bradley B edges out Kyle Bohm. Um, edges out. Edges out? Never mind. <laughs> are, you, are you a big edger? <laughs> you, you know what edging is. It's like almost coming with yeah, the... Yeah, yeah. I you can't. You said edge. <laughs> I was like, all right, Adam Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if uh, Bradley did the whole semen retention Semen thing. retention is very important for my success as well. Bro, Five to seven know. days, it's optimal. Brother, a day, a day without coming, I'm... Bro, it's good for you. Bro, my shit's on automatic. I'll... I'll come by, it's like, it's <laughs> hand, hands free All coming. I'll say is I've had great performances since I began semen, semen retention. I mean, how long are you retaining? Five to seven days. Five to seven days? No come? Yeah, no come. Brother, that's... It's good for you. It's optimal. I feel great. Dude, day three, godlike. Bro, I'll come in my sleep. <laughs> There's no... Like, I, I'm uncontro I have uncontrollable... <laughs> Cum spasms. That's okay. No I'm I'm acidic. My shit, my shit. It turns acidic if it sits too long. <laughs> burn a hole in my pants. 
Oh my God. Um, anyway, um, we, <laughs> we come to compete, BT. <laughs> I guess we, we try not to come to compete. Uh, fuck. Yeah, okay, so Bradley, Bradley edges out the fucking edges, victory. <laughs> edges out. Edges out the victory against uh, Mr. Cowbone, which is a uh, a great victory for for Bradley. He looked great in the tournament, and then and then the finals. Fuck, man. Quite a controversial call. I don't think it's controversial at all. I think everyone collectively agrees. It's in, like, in my opinion, and I'm sure in some of the in a bunch of the ADCC judges and refs' opinion, uh, Bradley scored. Like he hit a waiter sweep um, in regulation time, with like ten seconds left. He's in bottom deep half, sweeps a guy, and his opponent is on hit is on the hip on the mat, for no lie like five eight seconds. Yeah, I think it's like six or something like, like that. Six like six or seven seconds. Solid solid score. And we're all just like points points and. They, they just didn't, never gave it to him. They didn't call the points. I even believe the commentator was like, "Why isn't this?" A score, yeah, and uh, so that was that was a bit disappointing. And then, uh, and then in overtime, um, even in overtime, Bradley shot three times. He shot like two or three times, and the other guy wasn't very offensive. The guy wasn't very offensive. Yeah. That was a very weird, yeah, weird call, weird match. Um, but Bradley looked good. You yeah. know, he competed. He, he came to compete. He, he was there. Yeah, he deserved to 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 win that match. I mean, he literally. Did win the match, like yeah. scoring wise. I was quite quite uh, confused why they didn't give him points. Yeah, uh, we even sat down and like, reviewed the match. We were like, this is so blatantly a score. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, you know, end up losing in the finals. Uh, in my opinion, just a, a rough judging call. And then uh, Vince. 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 Vince had a great show. Another showing. thing as well. Didn't he take the guy? He like took the guy down. It was like kind of out, so they just reset. Talking um, about Vince? Yeah. 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 So, again, uh, kind of a, a rough, in my opinion, a rough call by the ADCC judges. Um, it's a toss up. It's a toss up, I yeah. Think this one's more of a toss up than Adams. But. Yeah, Adams was, was, in my opinion, definitely um, a, a, a win for him. Uh, and, then, and then Vince, um, you know, Vince is a big boy going against a lighter opponent, but whatever, it's a heavyweight. Guy show, he chose to compete in heavyweight. Um, so match begins, and Vince's opponent essentially is like bobbing and weaving and backing up like the entire match, and we're all waiting for stalling calls. No stalling comes. In regulation time, Vince shoots three takedowns, right? First takedown, he like put the guy down on the, on the mat, um, ran him out of bounds, and uh, the guy like latches onto a front head, and then they start them. They start them standing with the guy in the front head in the middle of the mat. And I thought that was, was a bit of a weird call. But either way, right? Vince takes three shots, three offensive uh, takedown attempts, where the the where the defensive guy latches onto a front head. Vince scrambles out, lands on top. So you're talking offense, defensive guy reattacks, and then then. Um, Vince attacks again and lands on top. So two attacks versus his one in, in three consecutive sequences like that. Um, and then go overtime 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, again, I think Vince, Vince took a couple shots and um, you know, didn't score anything, but was quite offensive the entire match. So um, you know, that was a, a much closer match. Um, Vince ends up taking second. Three silvers. Three silvers. Three silvers for the B team. Three for silver on so brand. So you know, J. Rod uh, more than more than likely um, gets an invite. But I mean, you fucking deserve it. Who else? There's nobody else out there that's even. That's like me and like a toss up between me and Elder. I'd, I'd assume. I mean, if you talk, if you want to uh, calculate everything, you just be in a, a uh, black belt world champion. Uh, right? uh, IBJJF world champ submitted him, worked him, and submitted him in yeah. UFC fight pass. Um, yeah, uh, you have much bigger following than practically everybody else that uh, that could be a contender for for the invite. You're absolutely, undeniably, the most exciting grappler out there. I mean, every like obviously, um, every time you compete, you have tons of eyes on you, but. You never cease to amaze the the crowd. People are dying to see you compete constantly. So, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of a no-brainer to tell to, me more to Tell pick me more. you. 
and you're anti-coming. So come and go, brother. Come and go. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's so silver medal usually uh, at trials usually leads to, uh, you know, being close to being invited or, you know, if, if uh, anyone ends up pulling out for worlds, let me know. I'm here. I'm ready to fucking compete for ADCC. Uh, it's going to be awesome over there. So regardless, I'll be there for fucking to close to the boys and shit. Um, and you, you did you did maps. this. You did this. You've been having this success at this weight class and you're. You're quite literally 10 to 15 pounds smaller than everyone yeah. else. Everyone, I, I came to uh, trials and everyone's like, oh, you got so big. I literally weighed in at the exact same weight as I did the last time uh, that I won. I don't know why I was a bit lighter because I usually walk around around like 190, maybe 195. But I was, I went in at, I think it was uh, 84 kilos. Um, so whatever that is in pounds. But um I think I was a bit lighter because everyone else uh, was cutting weight in the house. So it was just like eating less and just, yeah. We also had some great showings like um, <clears throat> like uh, Roman. We have, uh, Roman had had two matches. First match, I believe, wins by submission maybe or points. I'm not sure. But, but second match. But second match was absolutely wild. He goes against, um, who's the Atos guy? Uh, uh, I AJ, Florida yeah, guy? Yep, uh, AJ Agazar. So Roman versus, Ro Roman Corona versus AJ Agazar. Uh, match starts off, Roman takes a shot, runs him, runs him down, and then um, uh, AJ Agazar uh, attacks Kimura and pretty much like sits on the Kimura to award points for like three minutes, four minutes. Quite, quite a long time, Roman's uh, defending the Kimura, but at the same time he's defending the Kimura, he's also very close to acquiring the back. He's like, you know, very close to acquiring the, the back. Uh, so, so when points time comes on, uh, Roman like attacks again. And yet again, AJ Agazar attacks Kamora. Roman ends up on AJ's back, rear uh, triangle attacking yep. the back, but slightly off the center line. So he's like kind of a situation where, uh, Ethan. where Ethan yep. has, has rear triangle, but he's slightly off and doesn't uh, acquire points. Yep. But um, dude, against AJ Agazar, you're talking AJ, got silver medal at the ADCC World Championships and and Roman was like ro looked was fantastic right bro right there was right there looked fantastic yeah. so Roman's got it was his first ADCC he's a young dude and uh won't be sure to make make sure he competes more and um you know he'll be at the next trials and yeah. at, and, and we'll, we'll get him into some ADCC opens as well yeah. but completely phenomenal um uh, match from him. Yeah. Uh, we also had our, one of our new B team guys, um, Corbin. He's like a under 99 competitor, mm -hmm. young kid. He might be 18 years old, but he looked good out there. He won his first match um, via points, and then second match, um, the guy was like pretty strategic. He tried uh, his opponent tried like just play defense uh, essentially to essentially play defense until overtime. I don't know if he won. I think he lost via points. Uh, the guy ended up like scoring on him, take, taking taking them back or something. But um, Corbin's a pretty technical grappler. He has a great guard and uh, and good. Oh, you know, Corbin actually arm by arm barred his first guy. Two matches, day one, first one points, second one submission, and then on day two he ended up losing via points. But against older, bigger, stronger guys, he's one of the smaller guys in the under ninety nine division. Um, but a lot to learn, but uh, he looks great. I, uh, I think he'll be, um, I'll be, I think he'll be one to watch very soon. Uh, Kieran had some submissions, won, won, uh, won some matches via points as well, um, but had a great showing. Also, one of the scariest looking guys, he's just sick Bro. physique, absolutely shredded, bald head and mustache, or I guess he shaved he the mustache. He shaved it before uh, competition. He, I, I saw he, he got a sub on one of, his ma uh, one of his matches I did get to watch. He gets the sub, stands up, and it wasn't Kieran, it was the bastard. He just has this fucking crazy look in his eyes, and I was like, that's a fucking different person. <laughs> it's a it, different person. Yeah, some of these guys are bipolar when they compete, and I think it's, uh, I think it's great. I think you know, when you compete, you have to be a different, a different being than you are in, in training, because it takes, uh, takes something else to go out there and do it. You know, like when you're learning versus competing, uh, you have to be a different mindset, different mentality, and For sure. Kieran definitely has the ability to flip the switch. It's, that's a good ability to have, and you see it in his competition. He can he can flip the switch and just 
be different, you just know? Be different, yeah. He's, he said somewhere, he was like, Kieran won't break you, but the bastard will. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking, it's true. It's a pretty solid quote. All right, that's pretty much it for our breakdown. Again, anybody pulls out of the 88 kilogram, J-Rod's ready to step up and uh, put work in to the ADCC World Championships at Tui Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Drop a comment on this video and uh, give it a thumbs up. Buy the B-Team merch. You see I'm rocking the B-Team trucker hat. And uh, enjoy the B-Team content. See you guys next time.